If it wasn't for the San Felipe Creek, the city of Del Rio wouldn't be here. The city of Del Rio was founded because this is where there was water. Who would think that a creek so peaceful and so pretty could bring so much destruction? The floods of 1998 began on a Saturday afternoon. We started receiving uh, some rain, and those rains uh, continued to get heavier and heavier Saturday night. We were in the bedroom watching television when all of a sudden the power went out. I felt the carpet and it was wet. And when he peeked out the window, he said, let's go. And I said, where? And he said, let's get out. This isn't rainwater. This is water from the river. It's rising. My parents were old already. My father had Alzheimer's. My mom had Parkinson's. They couldn't get out by themselves, and I tried to get to their house immediately, of course. When we got out to the street, we held hands, one behind the other, and we heard people screaming, help, help, please help me. Other people were on top of houses. Some had climbed to the top of trees. It was just chaos. And we were in five and a half foot water. You really can't imagine until you're in it. We were afraid of slipping on the street because of the mud underneath us. And neither one of us knows how to swim. I went to look for my parents, and thank God, some youngsters from the neighborhood had gotten them out. Neighbors helped each other out. I tell you. All this is hard. We know a disaster can sometimes last a moment, a day, or three days. But the recovery, sometimes that is much longer than the same disaster. I believe that the residents, um, along with the rest of us, we all learned a hard lesson in 1998. One wonders, what can be done to better prepare a community? There are many dangers after a disaster that affect public health, like gas leaks, fallen trees, there is a lack of electricity or water. So it's not just about being prepared before, but also about being prepared after a disaster. Immediately after the flood, there wasn't any drinking water. The water was very contaminated. I'm a doctor, a physician, and we see a lot of people after a disaster. If you already have medical problems, how are we going to treat you when there is a disaster? It's important for a family to have a plan to take care of those family members who need help. All the sirens are telling people is there's something serious going on turn on TV, tune in, see what's going on. A watch is when authorities are saying there are natural conditions for something to happen. A warning is when it's already happening or is going to happen, and one has to be ready to evacuate or find shelter. The decision to evacuate is very important to your family. When the authorities say it's time, it's time to get out. Well, the essential things for us would be to prepare ourselves. Whether the sirens sound or not, prepare yourself and move ahead of time to higher ground. 
The medicines I take now are for cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes. I need insulin because my body doesn't make enough. For a plan to be complete, people, first of all, should protect themselves. They should have appropriate medications if they suffer from diabetes or any type of chronic disease. They should have their doctor's contact information, their prescriptions as extra medication, and to have their medications together with important documents in one bag so they can grab them and go quickly in an emergency. It's very important to have a grab-and-go kit. Items that are important are essential things, like food, water, clothes, the essentials you need for living away from home for a number of days so you can recover from a disaster. People, families, communities that don't have a plan create an extra problem for that community, for that family, for that individual. It will take longer to respond. It will create a problem within the problem that already exists. Be prepared with a plan because it'll be easier to face a disaster and to recover that much easier. Our residents are aware of the need to monitor and pay attention. They understand the important role they play. Now, when you hear there is danger, you need to prepare yourself ahead of time. We always need to have a little suitcase ready, like we're going on a trip. And that trip could very well be the one that saves your life. As we learned from the video, the aftermath of a disaster can trigger public health challenges, such as water quality issues after floods. Whether it's a flood, hurricane, tornado, or man-made disaster, we must be ready to respond and recover from a major catastrophe. That's why it's important to have a plan, to have essential items needed to live through a disaster, and to know how you'll get credible information during a crisis. Make a plan at texasprepares.org. You can also contact emergency management organizations to find out more about the plans available in your area. Planning now can make recovery from a disaster a safer experience.